Okay, in this session, we will uh, identify how to use various type of drills and impact wrenches, identify and explain how to use common power drills and bits, identify and explain how to use a hammer drill, identify and explain how to use pneumatic drills and impact wrenches, what has to do with compressors and air, identify and explain how to use various types of power saws, identify and explain how to use a circular saw, identify and how to use a saber and reciprocating saws. Safely proper demonstrate the use of filing tools. So we will show an electric drill, a hammer drill, or a rotary drill. Okay, basic drill designs is the same for most types with only slightly differences. The chuck and collar will be sometimes different. Sometimes it'll be a what's called a keyless chuck. The chuck jaws will hold the bit. Um, obviously that's your handle. This is your gear case again that has a motor, your trigger switch, and your pistol grip. Uh -huh. Okay, <clears throat> bit selection depends on the material being drilled and of course the size of the hole required. You have your twist bits, Forstner bit, uh, paddle or spade bit, masonry bit, or auger bit. So normally when we're drilling out houses, we use these ones. Uh, we'll do those in concrete. Um, those are basically for the plumber. It gives you a nice clean hole. Um, and they come in different sizes, so you can actually drill some pretty big holes with that. Uh, these are the whole hog bit drills that we use. Uh, these drills work well between studs and joists and walls and ceiling. The difference between the two models shown here is power. Um, I will tell you that this one on low will literally break your hand. Literally will break your hand if you get caught on something. This one will pretty much stop. So this is uh, called an angle drill, and that's just a standard drill. <clears throat> these drills um, are operate like a drill press using a hand wheel to push a bit against the work work pay, work piece maintain power to maintain the electromagnetic do not unplug so there's electric magnetic assembly and that is actually what what creates that is the electricity so that's why they tell you do not unplug that because it interferes with the magnetic um, power of the drill Okay, use the chuck key to tighten the chuck jaws. There are three holes in the chuck. Insert the bit shank into the chuck opening. Tighten with the chuck key. Hold the drill perpendicular to the material and start drilling. So sometimes on a keyless chuck, you don't have to worry about a cut chuck key. You just take your hand and hold it tight. And it'll tighten right up. Most cordless drills have a similar type of chuck that does not require a key, but the grip is slightly come compromised so you can see that there is no holes or key chuck in there let me get a bigger picture for you so they just put it in there and then they just hand tighten it right there okay rotary hammer drills provide more pounding action than hammer drills and at a lower frequency so this is when you want to drill into concrete when you drill holes and we sometimes drill three inch four inch five inch holes right into concrete for our pipe uh, usually when we get too bigger than that, we actually have a concrete company come out and actually do that work. Okay, each rotary brand requires a specific bit shank style. Adapts can be used, but they extend the overall length of the bit. So I'm going to get a little close here. So two cutter head. So those are splines. Um, splines, and then if you look at the top the way that they are. So if you look at the, each end, there's an SDS and there's a spline. So a taper, a hex, a hilti, a spline, universal SDS, which means it'll fit in just about anything, and an SDS. <clears throat> and then if you look at the bottom, adapters. So if you look up here, and let me enlarge that a little bit, is each one of those go in a specific drill, and a lot of them are not interchangeable. So you really have to be careful what you're doing because if you put it in the wrong drill, um, you know, you can ruin the drill. I mean, the drills are $1,500 and then these bits are anywhere from, oh, a hundred to a thousand dollars. Some of the bigger bits are diamond tipped and cased. So, and we have actually had people put in the wrong bits and totally destroy a drill. Okay, pneumatic drills are impact wrenches, eliminate the electric motor, and provide plenty of power and durability. So this is strictly air, so there's no electricity. So you just need a compressor with an air hose. 
Uh, a whip check keeps the hose from moving around if the connection is severed while under the pressure. And obviously, you know that if that were loose, it'd just be blowing air around. So it'd just be like a whipping, whipping hose. And this is a metal, so that could literally hit you in the side of the head. So, you know, this is why this is so dangerous. <clears throat> you always want to take every precaution you can. Light drills, all circular saws have a great deal in common. However, the weight, balance, and feel of the saw can differ quite a bit. You have your power switch, you have your upper blade, you have your depth adjustment, tilt adjustment. So you can actually, this can go up and down or tilt it this way. And once we get into the workshop, we'll be able, you know, your guide slot, your base, your lower guard. Uh, just some different things that we will be um, learning. Blade choice depends upon the material being cut, cut direction, cross cut or rip for wood and how smooth the cut edge needs to be. Carbide teeth increases blade significantly. So it kind of is just like the hand saws. The, the more the teeth, the finer the cut, the less the teeth, you're going to get a rough cut, but it'll go through a lot heavier type of material. The saw curve must be considered in a measurement and when making the cut, always be aware of which side of the cut line you need to place the saw blade on. So obviously you see that, you know, that takes part of the wood out. So if we have a measurement right here, and if we're on the wrong side of the measurement and we need a tight fit, that's going to um, contribute to the factor of it going into the right dimension. So, and if you cut that enough, you know, you could lose an inch of wood on your measurement if you keep covenant cutting and never learn about the curve. And I will tell you that you will remember the curve. Um, that is something that you will need to know what that is. So the kerf is the actual measurement in which the saw blade cuts into the wood. Okay. Um, circular saws, as you mark the cut, mark an X on the side that is waist. That way that's where you want the blade to be on. Guards will move as the cut progresses. Both hands on the saw. The material should be clamped, not held with one hand. Use the blade as a guide once the notch is base place moves off to the workplace. Never force the saw. Manage the power cord before the cut begins. Keep the lower blade guard free and clean. Do not add oil or grease. So obviously important stuff. Um, manage the power cord. I have actually seen saws cut right through the power cord. Um, you can get electrocuted by doing that. So always have to think about safety. Just bear with me a minute. I'm going to flip this around. My finger was getting in the way of the camera, so I apologize. Saber saws or jig, jig saws, scroll saws, typically these are re, 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 reciprocating saws too. Adjustable base plates, swivel left to right to allow them to make beveled cuts. So you can actually scroll with this. So you can, you know, make circles and you can do S shapes. So these have a little bit of flexibility as far as when cutting. Um, reciprocating saws, these are saws that are excellent for demolition work. Their design and cutting action makes them un unsuitable for detail work. So obviously reciprocating saw or saw saw is what we're going to call that. Okay, reciprocating saws, you're going to want to clamp the workpiece down to be sure that it's being demolished as physically sound. Be aware, be aware of what may fall or change position in the midst of or at the end of a cut. Use sharp blades that can dull quickly they dull quickly use higher speeds for wood than metal metal blades have significantly more teeth so you get a, again you get a finer cut avoid bending the blade over while cutting ensure the blade is properly secured in the saw broken blades often leave a piece in the saw blade mount keep a firm grip these saws often jump around especially when using coarse blades or if you don't have the saw blade going all the way through it'll actually hit the wood and come back out and i've seen it scratch doors um, i've seen drills break windows so that is it for this section and we will be going through the next section here in a second.